Well guys, I've been doing an awful lot of talking today, so I thought I could do some picking. This is the, an American 1100 series. This one is actually from Ted Park up in Canada. And he sent me some locks made by other people. This one's by Steel Pinnings, and it's a 5-pin key. And it works beautifully. It's a pretty strong spring on this core. So it might be a little hard to detect uh, the pins during picking, but non-key retaining. See if we can't get a pick without that key. Get, out of the way. get this thing oriented. Okay, I'm going to use top of the keyway and see if I can find the right size here. Use the long end. And that'll work. A lot of floppiness there in that core, so you know we got some security pins to deal with. I'm going to use a medium hook. Uh, this one is the blue handle 15 thousandths, and that's because with Americans you can use work from the bottom of the keyway and still access all those pins, get a really good angle. And steel pinnings. Feels like he put six pins in here. Two, three, four. It's only a five pin lock, so that last pin is probably riding off of the very tip right there. I'm counting six, so that's what we're working with. All right. It is a challenge lock, so light tension all the way to the rear. And let's get this dude open. Looking for a binder. Feels like pin four. I got a click. Pin three. Click, two clicks. Probably overset him. Pin one, little feedback. Had a little counter rotation off of him. I'm already dropping pins because of that darn spring. So a little more tension. Whew, that's not good. Let's try this one again. All the way in. Moderate tension this time. Okay, that was four. Okay, that was two. I'll try not to pick my wrench out of there again. Okay, that was four. I got a little turn on the core there. Trying to get back behind that tension. It's got a little counter rotation there on one. Come on. More than a little, quite a bit. So probably a spool in one. Okay, that was six. Very slight turn of the core. Maybe just make sure that is not open. I'm getting a counter rotation on five. Come on. There we go. All right, let's take a look inside of this thing, see what steel pinning's got for us. Okay, it has a non-bypass or anti-bypass wafer installed, so we could not have bypassed it. 
a lot of you guys always ask that, and quite honestly, that's one of my favorite ways to get in as well. All right, um, let's get this up here. Take this dude off. We do have a key, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so let's lock it up and let's pry this dude up. This is this uh, circlip remover is the wrong size for the American core, unfortunately. So just we have to make it up as we go. There we go. Piece of cake. A lot of crunchiness there. A small one. And perfect. Unless there's a T-pin, we should be just fine. And there's a T-pin. Look at there, number six. Luckily it was in the opposite direction. That could have been devastating. With a failed gutting. Okay, we got a serrated. We got a ser homemade serrated. We got a serrated commercial. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Looks like a really tight serrated. He didn't want to come out. He's an older pin. Don't know if that's significant or not, but. Okay, the last one is a T pin. We know that, so let me pull him out. And this one is stuck. There we go. All right, what do we have on the core? We got nothing. There's n no undercutting, countermilling, no threading, no nothing. Stock core. Let's see what we got here. Why are we not focusing here today? There we go. Hard to. It's hard enough to got these through the camera. It's got to focus for me. Okay, we got a serrated spool. So we knew number one was a spool. Number two, straight up serrated. Commercial. Number three, homemade bit of alien technology. Very nice. I don't think he comes apart. I think that's a one-piecer. Next one. Commercial serrated. Again, more of this alien technology, homemade. And the last one is another T-pin. I'm surprised we didn't have trouble with him falling into the gap um, when we pulled that core out. I'm surprised he didn't fall down in that little gap right there at my fingertip. That would have, it's kind of what I try to avoid by using a shim. Alright, I had two pins fall out of there for the last one, and he had a baby spring in him. So we had this guy, and then we had a baby spring, and the rest of these were all the same. Alright, give me a second, let me orient these correctly, and I'll show you. I guess in the lock picking business this would be what they call the money shot. Uh, inside the Bible, what do we got? Anything, anything. Nope, no threading and when you look at the top of it you also see no evidence of threading because you're going to tap, these are the same diameter and if you're going to tap those holes you're probably going to end up tapping those or wallowing them out as well. All right, guys, here you go. The only weirdness, let's see, in the bottom we had basically all serrated, except let me find a pointer here. This is a homemade pin. It is serrated. Uh, they're, all of these are serrated. And then this last one, if I can get some focus going, is looks like a serrated with a T-pin on the top of it. Along the top we had a uh, serrated spool, serrated, a piece of homemade technology right here. Standard serrated, another piece of homemade serrated technology, and then this one was doubled up with a baby spring. He's the only one that had a weird spring, and he's the only one that had a double. I don't really understand the reason we had two pins in there, but that's what we pulled out. Anyway, fellas, thanks for your time. Stay safe, stay legal, steel pinnings. Great job. Thanks, guys.